Hey guys, Sarah here. So today I want to go over a very interesting topic that was requested and I touched on it on a, in a different video a little bit. We're going to go over parthenogenesis and sorry if you're hearing fireworks outside. It's still pretty close to 4th of July and so people are blowing things up. Uh, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. Uh, before I jump into anything though, I am going to shameless plug my books again. Uh, these are, oops, this one's upside down. The Corn Snake Cultivar Compilation books. You can find them on my website, sarahsnakeshop.com. I'll link it in the description. Um, this information is not going to be in those books. Uh, this is more of a sort of a deep dive genetic type thing that is going to be more for the breeders or the overly curious. So um, I might put it in a book in the future. It was sort of in the plan, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but these two books are on different gene mutations and how they originated and who first produced them, as well as the second book actually being on the different types of different morphs. So that it compares like vanishing stripe to regular stripe or comparing, you know, candy cane to a regular amel and things like that. So uh, if you're looking for a lot of really cool history information on corn snakes and corn snake morphs, the first one's going to be the one to go. And if you're looking for um, difference in selectively bred types, the second one's the way to go. Uh, both of them are actually really awesome and I put a lot of work into them and a lot of research. So definitely recommend you check them out. Okay. Going to go into parthenogenesis now. Uh, I'm actually going to link a lot of stuff in the description. Uh, I did a lot of research for this video, and so I want you guys to be able to like go and cross check um, what I am saying with sources that I have read and stuff like that. Um, and uh, it's it's a kind of a complicated topic, so I'm going to try to reduce it down to layman's terms because. Uh, even though a lot of the terms might not be as specific as they would put in, you know, like a, an article or something like that, uh, or like a journal, something like that, um, it's going to be uh, as easy to understand as possible. So uh, I'm going to start out with what parthenogenesis is. Essentially, it is when a female animal clones herself, or I suppose probably a plant could do this as well, and it's probably considered the same thing, uh, it clones herself and all of her offspring are genetically the same to her. Now, you might off the top of your head think that they would probably all be females, but that is actually not the case with many reptile species and bird species. Uh, so, as you might know, we humans have an XY chromosome system with females being XX and males being XY. But with a lot of snake species, especially colubrids, which is what we're talking about with corn snakes, they have the ZW system instead. So um, it's just a way of differentiating. I'm not going to go into why it's called ZW and stuff like that, but just remember ZW instead of XY. And also remember it's reversed with males and females. So again, female people uh, are the XX and the male is the XY, but in snakes, the female is the ZW and the male is the ZZ. So um, the female has, uh, it's basically, she she is het both, uh, heterozygous instead of the homozygous, which I, I know that that's kind of, those are kind of big words, but essentially um, we're in people, the uh, females are the ones that have two of the same and the males have two different ones, the, in, in corn snakes and other colubrids, maybe not all colubrids, but I'm, I'm pretty sure everywhere that I've read it has said like just colubrids in general. The males have two of the same, where the females have the two different ones. So this is why I think parthenogenesis, especially in corn snakes, is particularly interesting. Um, so a lot of you have probably heard about the whiptail lizards, and if you don't know what the whiptail lizards are, you may know them as the lizard species that is all female, and they are all parthenogenic. Uh, they all are clones of each other, essentially. This is different than corn snakes. They actually do still have the XY system, according to my research. Uh, they are just all the same. Uh, they're, like I said, they're all just clones of each other. And uh, so they're all going to be female, but it's not the same in corn snakes. And I actually 
drew this up hoping hoping that you guys can like read it and benefit from it. So colubrids like corn snakes, uh, the males are the ZZ and then the females are the ZW. So if you put that into a Punnett square, I know a lot of you guys are afraid of Punnett squares, but I'm going to explain it. Um, I have ZW, ZW up here. And if you put this Z down, you get the Z and the Z. And then the W down, you get the W and the W. If you put this Z over, Z, Z, and then this DW or this W over uh, W W. So what you have is half of them are ZW, a quarter is ZZ, and a quarter is WW. So when a female corn snake, for example, would clone herself, uh, maybe not a corn snake because that doesn't happen too often in corn snakes, if ever. I think I've only heard of one or two cases that are even possible, like possibly. But there are other colubrids that have cloned themselves, and it's on record and like I said I will put some links in the description if you're curious to read about those things um, but as you can see the one quarter of them are gonna be male and then half of them are gonna be female and then this WW uh, they usually are actually not viable and they will not come to term in fact they probably will, won't even like the female may like lay a couple of dud eggs like usually the embryos don't even make it far enough with that because they don't have enough genetic information you kind of need at least a little bit of both uh, to, to get this at least in the case of corn snakes now I know that I mentioned the whiptail lizards they don't seem to need both they seem to be fine otherwise and that's just an evolutionary miracle to me which uh, I'm super interested in genetics is my passion and so I think that that's really really cool um, so I'm just gonna kind of go over it uh, step by step I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail because you guys already kind of have all the answers with what I've given you but essentially if a female does not notice a male around and she uh, decides that she's gonna reproduce she can clone herself take her um, ZW and uh, go ahead and do so the reason I used a Punnett square is because a Punnett square actually works for uh, genes as well and for the same reason you're taking half of two different parents DNA and combining them uh, well, what you're actually doing with the parthenogenesis, though, is you're just taking two of the same female's DNA and putting it together. So uh, it, it has the same effect, even though you're only working with one animal. So it, it is a little strange to think about, but it still works, at least statistically speaking. Um, so she, she clones herself, and uh, as far as in corn snakes and other colubrids, um, you're going to get a nice mix of males and females. I have read in a couple of places that sometimes only the males will survive, and sometimes not even the females will. But um, I think from the few cases that I actually read that was false, I've, you know, there's a lot of conflicting information online about everything. Like I said, I'm going to link everything in the description so you guys can read over it if you want to get into great detail about it. Um, the reason that I'm specifying this is about colubrids is because it actually seems to be different when you're talking about boas and pythons. The bigger snakes like that seem to have more of an XY type system where when the females do clone themselves, it is they kind of end up having all females. Um, and I've actually seen this on uh, Prehistoric Pets YouTube channel. I used to watch the YouTube channel all the time. I'll try to also link that video down below. But um, they were going through a female's clutch and they noticed that none of the babies had any of the genetics that the male had and they only had the genetics that the female had and sure enough they tested all of the babies and all the babies were females and so they're pretty sure that that was a parthenogenic clutch which is why originally I thought and a lot of other people probably thought that this cloning process is going to yield all females but that just isn't the case in all species, especially smaller snakes and in some birds as well. A lot of the bird species also have this ZW system. It works a little bit differently. I'm not going to go into the details about birds. Um, uh, that will Some of that information will be in what I link below. Um, but I hope that you found this video interesting. Parthenogenesis is a very like different concept for people, especially when it comes to uh, colubrids and being able to get males out of a female cloning herself is is 
is a very different concept than what you're used to. So I hope that you got a lot out of this video. If you did, leave a like and share it anywhere that you think uh, people might be interested. And again, uh, I'm going to leave a link down below in the description for my website where you can buy my corn snake books. Um, I'm actually going to start doing promo codes on each of my videos. So um, I might not do that in this video. We'll see. But if I do, you'll find it in the description and that promo code will be at least a few dollars off the books. So um, if you see a promo code in the description, use it on my website and you'll get three dollars off each book you decide to buy. So thank you for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Put comments down below anything that you want to know about. This is more of like a breeder deep dive type of thing uh, as opposed to my normal Q&A videos. So if there's something deep like this that you'd like to know about and you'd like me to research for a video, just let me know down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.